wow, it's been so long. Happy New Year, it's 2019, it's nearly February, and I'm finally getting around to filming our first video of the year. That is what we need. Mmm, ah, so good. So yeah, it's our first video of the year. Yeah, we've been slacking somewhat. This winter has really not been that great. Firstly, I've done hardly any fishing. Secondly, I've been sat at this desk for the last month or two, straight editing. I've hardly seen any sunlight and it's been pretty dull. And that is the reason for the lack of videos. <laughs> but, but late last year, before winter really kicked in, we did get out to do some fishing and that's what I'm gonna share with you in this video right now. And I'm also gonna be answering some of your questions that you've been asking and I've got a fair few of them written down on my laptop so I'm gonna do some of them later. Let's kick things off with, ah, some river pike fishing. I think I did one or two lure sessions down the river. In particular, I was using a, I think it was a six inch paddle tail soft plastic and then I was rigging it up with a 10 gram jig head, screwing that into the nose of the bait and then having a single treble hanging down underneath. The 10 gram weight was enough to get the bait to the bottom in the flowing water because obviously when it's a river you've got to think about the flow and make sure that bait gets down to the bottom where the pike are likely to be sat. So yeah, I did a couple of sessions there and I managed to catch a few fish. Only about four pound, five pound maybe, but took the lure and after losing a couple, made it worthwhile. That's the lure that did the trick. Perchy colored one again. Boom, try and catch another one. Another baby. Another small one, but very nice colours. Very clean pike. On my first trip, I only managed to get amongst really small pike, but uh, I did return and I managed to catch something a little bit better. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's not bad. Oh, God, wow. Oh, yeah, oh. Oh. yeah we got it. Yeah. <laughs> we got a pike on a short lure fishing trip for an evening. I was not really thinking about going out this evening, but it was a tough day at work, and I thought I need some fresh air. I brought my lure with me, and I caught this pretty nice pike. Stuck in the mud. <laughs> as well as using lures, I also tried some bait fishing. One session I remember, I was fishing up against this bridge and I dropped a little live bait in where I was seeing some fry scattering and I had one that way as well. There he is. Probably only four pound, but a nice fish. See ya. I haven't been able to get amongst any of the really big pike that live in there. And although I know that there's some monster fish living in that stretch, I think it'll involve some serious perseverance to, to get amongst them. And seeing as I have literally no patience whatsoever, I think that's gonna be pretty tricky. So let's pull up the first question that I've got on my list. Henry Riddock asked, what was 2018's most memorable catch for each of you? Hmm, 
Okay, this particular moment is proper vivid in my memory and something which I think Carl and I will both agree on was the best fishing moment of 2018. Let me just grab something for you. This just shows how amazing we thought it was. We actually got a picture printed out for our wall of that moment. Yep, it was that time when we were in America. We were carp fishing with our friends, Brendan, Austin and Brian. And we were fishing this incredible lake in the Michigan forest. And we had five 30 pound carp all on the bank at the same time. Well, that was one special moment. That was our best moment of 2018 for sure. Exploring new places and fishing for new species of fish is definitely my favorite thing about fishing these days. And there's nothing better than stumbling across a new piece of water and finding a gold mine where you just have an amazing fishing session. That involves going on Google Maps, finding any piece of blue water, zooming in on it, going there and just seeing what happens. Like some, most of the time it ends up going really badly, you don't catch anything. But also you stumble across some pretty cool places as well. I recently found a tiny stream, a really thin crystal clear stream, which flows under a motorway bridge, through forests, through towns and everything. And I've tried, I think, three or four different stretches of this small stream and I've been catching a few fish. With this style of fishing, I like to travel very light. I will always just bring one rod most of the time I have a small lure on the end. If you use a very small lure, you're likely to catch anything really, perch, pike, any predatory fish, as well as chub. And chub are what I've been catching recently. Here we go. Yep, we're on, we're on, we're on. Oh, yes, we're going on. We're going on, it's a chub. Yeah. I knew we had to get one eventually. The stream looks so good. Took the lure. There we go, small stream chub. There you go, mate. Very nice. We found this tiny, tiny ditch on the map. We found a little deeper hole and this chub took my lure. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Predatory chub. Not a bad one. <laughs> That's living in this tiny ditch. Sweet. Let's keep walking down, there might be some more fish. That's a good chub. <laughs> At the moment, we found chub and nothing else, but it looks so good for other species like perch as well. Look at that. From another tiny little bit of river. This one's even bigger. Oh boy. Check out that. <laughs> On another occasion, Carl and I visited a stream. Again, somewhere which we'd never fished before. Never somewhere which we'd even thought of fishing really. But we gave it a go and once again we were surprised with the results. Oh yep, yep, we're going. It's a perch, it's a perch. Yeah, boy. We got a perch. First perch of the day. 
Look how red the fins are. That is beautiful. I had a perch from one spot and we traveled upstream, fished another few spots. And we also managed to get on some dace and chub. Oh, yeah, another dace. Oh. I'm gonna swing him. Swing him. Oh. Go on, you can do it. No! <laughs> swing him. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very nice chub. There's my chub on this freezing cold day. From this piece of water that would look like it wouldn't hold any life whatsoever. It's so small. But I've been catching a few days. And then, this nice chub. That was a good dive. That was a good dive, yeah. Good rating from the judges. And that's one of my mini aims for this year, is to do more exploring. Don't go somewhere because you know it's gonna be good. Go somewhere because you don't have a clue what it's gonna be like. Go somewhere new, which you've never been before. And I'm really excited to, yeah, scroll Google Maps again, see if I can find some more lakes and rivers and streams and do some more exploring, because it is so much fun. Okay, we got another question from aquatic underscore college. How many times has Alex gone back to that snowy river to find himself a snow carp girl? This is quite a soft subject for me. Um, mostly because <laughs> I've been back to that canal pretty much every every week since since Carl went there and um, I've met no one. <laughs> that was so bad acting. <laughs> but I'm going to keep at it, keep persevering, keep going back because you never know. Maybe I need it to snow actually. Maybe I need it to snow, then I'll go. Christmas, we traveled down to Cornwall to catch up with our family, see our grandparents who live down there. And yeah, it was great to, great to spend some time with them. But obviously, seeing as we were down in Cornwall, we had to do some fishing as well. The target species was wrasse. We spent a few hours fishing for these wrasse in some of the most incredible surroundings. And yeah, the trip was a success. Hello, Alex. Should we go see if we can catch something from the ocean? Yeah. The way we're going to try and catch these rats today is with a 5 to 20 gram lure rod, 25 pound braid. These rats are incredibly strong fish and that is definitely necessary to have strong line. I've tied a fluorocarbon leader onto the end here. Firstly I thread up a, a float stop and then a weight, a bead and then a offset worm hook. And then you hook on a, this one's a 3 inch uh, worm and it's really weedless. So that hooks into the, the hook tucks in, and then it's a weedless presentation, so it's not gonna get caught on the bottom all the time. Let's try and catch some rats. Oh yeah, I had a bite, I swear. I swear I had a bite, yeah. It was a proper savage. Dum. Oh yeah. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Are you serious? Oh my god! Whoa! It's orange! It's red! <laughs> yes, Alec! That is a beauty! <laughs> oh my you did goodness! It. You did it! His head is so cool looking. See ya! They are so cool. Wow. 
Oh. oh! 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 It's a big one! It's a big one! We're here on the Devonshire coast catching wrasse at the end of December. It's our last session of the year. And I've had two of these amazing animals. Both caught on the lures. Both different colours as both well. Both completely different colours. And both have fought so hard. Like you wouldn't think a fish of this size could pull so hard, but they're big paddle tails and they must be so muscular. But they love the little plastic worms. Instant. Yeah. Look at that one. Bluey, purpley, orange, that one. Check him out. Before I go on to talk about some more of the pike fishing that we've been doing, I thought I'd answer a pike related question. The question comes from McKay Finley. What's your favorite way to fish for pike and why? This one's a pretty simple one to answer for me and that's because I just absolutely love lure fishing for pike. However productive bait fishing might be using a live bait or a dead bait, lure fishing is by far my favorite. And that is simply because it's so active, you're constantly moving, you're constantly casting and when you get the bite you're holding the rod and you just feel it all through your hands and a lot of the time you actually see the bite stick around to the end of this video to see a pretty incredible bite that Coles gets from a monster pike but yeah lure fishing 100 percent is my favorite way to fish for pike but saying that live baiting and dead baiting is extremely productive and on a recent trip to a gravel pit we actually did both lure fishing and bait fishing and caught fish on both we were invited to a lake by a guy called Danny. He said, come fishing with me for a day and I'll take you to one of my lakes, which holds some pretty big pike. Obviously, we were 100% game for that. We turned up, flicked some baits out, and yeah, we ended up catching a few. It's cold out today, but I'm gonna cast around this lure to try and catch a big pike. Oh, my float is gone. Oh. First fish of the day. Brilliant, we got one. That's the first bite of the day. Apparently there's some pretty big pike in this place, so we're gonna keep at it and keep trying. Oh! Oh, it's on! Oh no, it's gone. Only a baby one. I let that one get away. Honestly, it's only small. That's really strange, guys. I I cast it to that place three times in a row, and each time it was like it was tapping. But I didn't set the hook. I thought it was just tapping on the bottom, like bumping on the stones. And then I set the hook, and it was on. Yep. Oh no. No, it's a. Yeah, it's a pike. Yeah. What? It wasn't pulling back. I thought it was like a plastic bag or something. It was just like slowly moving in. It's a small one, but we're getting bites. His fins wobbling in the wind. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's like walking. He's cool. Yeah, it's going. Yeah.
The way we're fishing today is really ideal because we're casting the live baits out into the pond and then we're lure fishing whilst we wait. So we can just cast with the lures whilst keeping an eye out for that float in the corner of your eye. And this time I was actually watching the float when it's bombed right under. I've got this nice pike, still not the monster we're after. We want something about three times the size today. But we're gonna keep at it, keep trying. I got this one on a perch imitation lure. Seems to be working quite well because that's what, that's what took the last bite as well. So thanks Danny for letting us come down. That was a good few hours on the bank catching some pike. This is an interesting question. Uh, oh, it's from the same guy. Wow. And he said, what made you want to document your fishing? I don't, I don't think I can really put my finger on exactly what it is that makes me want to document fishing but all I know is I always feel the need to and when we go out fishing and experience something incredible like catching a pike that you see take the bait you you just like you look around you're like who else saw that who did anyone else see that and most of the time no they didn't but if you had a GoPro rolling on your chest cam filming it you're then opened up to be able to share that with everybody you can share it with anybody then and I think that's really special, being able to share stuff with people who wouldn't have naturally experienced it. And now onto our highlight of this winter's fishing. We went lure fishing at a crystal clear lake, and this is how we got on. We're about to go pike fishing at a lake we haven't been to for approximately one year. Don't know why we haven't been there. It's quite good normally. We're gonna go back today. Oh yeah, yep, yeah. whoa, this is the decent one, decent one, first cast, oh. I'm not kidding, look at the swell. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's not massive, but he's nice. Oh, I just hooked right on the edge. First cast. The first cast I've done with the lure for about a week or two. And this one is on the end. It's probably about 10 pounds which is bigger than most pike I've caught. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the lure was so close to the surface. Whoa, he's going crazy. Mean pike. Oh my, that was massive, that was massive. It came right in and looked straight at it and turned at the last second because I moved it too quickly and I think it saw me. I always cast like downwards and then think, I hope there's no car this down there. It's too, um, it's too deep diving. Oh, oh! 20 pounder. Oh my god, that is a big pike. It's massive! Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is the biggest pike that I've ever caught from this lake. That's a good pike. Yes. Seeing a pike hit a lure right in front of you like that and just setting the hook into it, making sure you've got it. What can beat that? And when it's, when it's a pike of that sort of size, that really gets the heart going. Here we go. All right, that's massive. That is massive. An absolute crocodile. Oh, that's 20, just over 20, 21. That's your biggest pike since my, it's my first 20. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't expect to get one this big. That is pretty impressive. This one was just over 20 pounds, just uh, just 21 or something. And uh, 
the size of this creature's head. That's like the size of the 30 pounder that I caught, but it's just not as fat. Caught it on a lure, which makes it even more exciting. Oh, what a day, what a day. Wow. That was a fun day. Uh, I'd say a day, probably two, two and hours. a half hours or something. We caught three pike, one small one, one kind of medium one, and one absolute monster that I'm still super hyped about. Not really much more to say other than 21 pound pike. Got one more question from KLH Fishing. What's your challenges for this year? At the beginning of each year, I always love to set myself challenges, aims, goals, things I want to achieve by the end of the year. And I guess the main thing is I just want to go on as many fishing adventures as possible, have as much fun as I can, and just, well, if, if we have a year like last year, it will be a success. To be more precise though, in April, we have set ourselves a 10 day carp fishing challenge in the USA, where we're gonna be fishing a huge lake. I mean huge fishing for giant carp. Uh, I cannot wait for that. As well as that, we're gonna do a USA Canada road trip where we're gonna be doing a lot of driving, but hopefully we'll be catching a lot of fish as well. They're just a couple of the super exciting things that we've got planned for this year. But I promise you there's so much more, there's so much more and I'm looking forward to it. As soon as this warm weather comes around, it's gonna be go, go, go. It's gonna be busy, it's gonna be a lot of fishing but uh, it's gonna be incredible and I can't wait. So there you go, you're pretty much up to date with all the fishing that we've been getting up to. Yeah, sorry we've been slacking recently on the uploads. Hopefully that's gonna all change soon, come spring. All I can say is check out our Instagram where we try and post more regularly. And if you feel like supporting us further, we have a Patreon account, which is linked below. Thank you so much for sticking around. I promise there's gonna be so much exciting stuff coming on this YouTube channel soon. See you next time. Cheers.